It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? They are CBS News correspondents Larry Lasseur and Walter Cronkite. Our distinguished guest for this evening is T. Coleman Andrews, Commissioner of Internal Revenue. As our guest tonight would be the first to admit, nobody loves the tax collector. But while the subject of taxes is always in the realm of politics, the job of Mr. Andrews is to see that we pay no more or no less than we're obliged to do by law. Mr. Commissioner, since the deadline for filing income tax returns is still a few days away, do you have any idea of how many people haven't filed yet? Well, no, not, not exactly how many have not filed, but uh, we've been keeping in pretty close touch with it from time to time. And of course, we won't know until after the April 15th deadline is passed for individuals. You know, corporations passed on the 15th of March. Well, but we won't know until after that April 15th deadline is passed, and we've studied the results and see what returns are filed in each uh, week uh, of the filing period, just exactly what the pattern's going to be. We do you know that a lot of people haven't filed yet who should have. You do know that? Yes, we do know that. Uh, but. Uh, uh, people are being people, as they always are. They they take an advantage of of the opportunity which they were supposed to have to have another 30 days. The only thing is that I think I should say to all those folks who haven't filed that uh, these people that work in the revenue service really knock themselves out almost during the filing period, and uh, I hope no one is going to think that I should uh, insist that those people work overtime between now and April 15th in order to take care of people who really could file uh, more promptly and now uh, rather than wait until the last minute. Well, has the extension, uh, Mr. Andrews, of the uh, filing period for another month been of any help to the uh, Revenue Service? Yes, it has. It's been, it's been a tremendous help to us as well as a good deal of help to the taxpayer. It's helped us in this way. You see, we have to keep in mind all times, at all times what our two main problems are. Number one is to collect taxes. And number two is to uh, uh, get after those people who uh, are inclined to hold back on us and those who, though they don't hold back in reporting, nevertheless just don't like to pay taxes or any other belt. Now, uh, anything that slows down those two efforts uh, renders us inefficient. So what, we, what we've been able to do with this uh, extended filing period is to keep more of our people at their regular tasks. And therefore, we've been able to hold up collections and hold up, in fact, increase the number of examinations made of tax returns. And we have, to some extent, gotten rid of that peak. Does that, that mean, uh, Mr. Andrews, that more of us are going to get checked because of this extra month we've been given? It sure does. Uh, you know, we've been on a program of building up our uh, auditing organization, our uh, examiners, for well, nearly 18 months now. And we expect to go right on up to the point where we will probably have about uh, twice as many field auditors as we had uh, two years ago or 18 months ago, and probably uh, half again more uh, fraud investigators than we had at that time. And I might say that with improved auditing methods uh, and the increased force, we expect to examine four times as many returns with twice the number of people. What percentage of the, of the total number of people putting in returns will get checked under that? And I wouldn't you like to know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, let's, let me give it to you this way. Uh, what is going to happen, what happens is this. Uh, a great many people, whose returns don't have to be checked because their income is derived entirely from withholdings, and we know what that is, and we know what tax they owe. Then as we get on up the scale, the, the probability of being checked increases 
uh, in, in proportion to the presence of a number of factors which we don't have time to go into, so that I say this, that uh, as we increase our staff, our examining staff, and as we improve our methods, the probability of anyone uh, not getting checked is diminishing very rapidly. Don't you get to a point where the cost of the uh, collecting of the taxes gives a diminishing return for the amount of taxes collected? Oh yes, uh, there is a law of diminishing returns, but I'll say this, we haven't reached that point yet, and I'm not, uh, I haven't gone to worry about that. We'll cross that bridge when we get near it. If I may say so, Mr. Commissioner, uh, some people think that the 1954 tax returns are extremely complicated. I think one editorial said that they were the most complicated in the whole history of the income tax. Uh, what do you think of that criticism? Well, would you like for me to say what I think of that particular statement? I think that particular statement was made more to create effect than it was to uh, show any evidence of having really studied the situation. And uh, as far as that proposition generally is concerned, though, you'd probably be interested to know that actually there has been relatively little criticism that the returns are more difficult than they have been in the past. Now, there's only one good reason for that, and that is that they aren't any more difficult than they've been in the past, with the exception of two schedules. You know, we now have a credit for dividends and a credit for retirement income. Well, no one who's criticized those returns uh, has suggested that we leave those, those calculations off of that return, and no one has suggested any better way to do it than we've provided. Those are the only two things on that return that are essentially different from last year. Now, that's Form 1040. That deals with the fellows uh, of fair-sized income, men and women. The 1040A, however, which is for the, the small taxpayer, the man who's income up to $5,000, who wants to take the standard deduction of 10%. That's the simplest tax form, or income tax form, that anybody's ever seen. Now, I'm, that's not just my opinion. Uh, representatives of 85 different governments of the world that have been through our shop tell us that. It's really the simplest thing that anybody's ever developed. But the size of a check made on a card so it can be processed manually or, or uh, by machine, either one, it asks certain very simple questions. Questions that anybody can answer. Contains no calculations. We do all the work. So really, for about 35 million people, we've made the job a whole lot easier. And we certainly haven't made it any more difficult for the rest of them, except to the extent that we've had to provide uh, a means of figuring some of the credits that Congress, in its desire to give some relief, uh, gave them when they developed the 1954 Act. Mr. Mr. Andrews, uh, uh, do you ever try to figure out how much each investigator, these new men you were talking about, how much each investigator should bring in in order to pay for his own salary and expenses? Well, we don't, uh, we don't figure how much he should bring in. We figure how much he actually does. Uh, uh, actually, what happens is this. We put a new man on, and in the first year after he has learned his job, and that takes quite a few months to get him up to that point, he'll probably bring in 10 to 1. The next year, he'll get up to maybe 20 to 1. And as he goes on, he might even get to the point of, of as much as uh, 30 and 40 to 1. Some of, for instance, of our top uh, investigators produce as much as a quarter of a million dollars of revenue a year. And they only get paid about $10,000 tops. So you see, that's 25 to 1. Mm -hmm. So right. th th what they bring in depends upon how good they are. In other words, we don't concentrate. We don't say to an agent, you've got to bring in so much money. We say to him, you've got to be a good agent. If he's a good agent, the money comes as a matter of course. Do mm -hmm. you see any hope of uh, simplifying the amount of bookkeeping required by those in middle and higher income brackets, particularly those who are uh, independent contractors, so to speak, professional men, doctors, lawyers, and uh, radio announcers, people like that? To give you a very frank answer, no. But uh, let me explain a little bit on that. The fact of the matter is that not nearly as many people keep the records they should uh, as we would like to see. As a matter of fact, I'd say that over half of the people who should keep some kind of records don't. 
Now then, uh, how can you simplify something for somebody who isn't already doing what he should be doing? And moreover, you can't simplify the bookkeeping requirements of a tax law until you simplify the law itself. Well, would that $20 uh, uh, cut across the board have helped your problem any if it had gone through the Congress? It would have played havoc with us administratively. We would have thrown us into the worst tailspin we've, been, we've ever been into. I don't believe it would have been administratively possible for us to have handled it. Well, since there are several days left for about two or three million taxpayers, I guess, to file their returns, Mr. Andrews, have you any advice to give them now? Uh, I, I do. Uh, I have some advice to give them more in the form of a hope. Please get down there and get the job over with and don't wait till the last minute because uh, when that last minute arrives, uh, we just can't get to everybody that wants to be helped. We have all kinds of facilities for helping everybody provided they'll come at us uh, with a reasonable spread of volume and not all at one time. And we just can't do anything for those that don't show up on time uh, because after that it's too late. Incidentally, Mr. Andrews, if a person asks for an extension on filing their return, is this an invitation for an investigation? No, sir, not at all. But thank you very much, Mr. Coleman Andrews, the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to have been here. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and Walter Cronkite. Our distinguished guest was T. Coleman Andrews, Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Longines has perfected after 20 years of development what are regarded as the world's most advanced automatic watches. The exclusive self-winding mechanism is fabricated with a perfection which represents a new triumph for non-gene craftsmanship. Now here are facts that you should know. The automatic watch is wound by the movement of a pendulum or a rotor. Now this diagram represents the winding rotor of many automatic watches. See how it moves in only part of a circle. Now this diagram represents the non-gene automatic. It has a full swing. 360 degree winding rotor. Every movement of the wrist produces winding action. Design, however, is only the beginning of the Longines automatic. What makes a Longines watch so superlatively fine is the unsurpassed perfection of Longines manufacture, which has won for Longines 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. If finest quality is your first consideration, then whatever your needs in a watch, whatever the style, whatever the purpose, Longines has made it for you. For every Longines watch will demonstrate in full measure the greater accuracy and complete reliability which made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. I invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.